Hello, everybody. Howdy. How are y'all doing? We have had a great time with Jonathan, and he is gone now. I already missed the boy. We're really, really, really sad about it. And the past couple days has been hard, and let me tell you why. There are wild wildfires everywhere. We're talking about Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. We were at a different camp spot with Jonathan so he would be closer to get on the road to get back home. And we ended up coming more north. I looked up and found some awesome camp spots 20 minutes from where we were. Okay, primitive, amazing back uh, river. Thought it was gonna be an easy day. We just kind of took our time. We packed up, we got on the road. We get to these spots and the whole forest is closed due to fire activity. No smoke in the area and I ha we've been checking the internet, we've got fire maps. There was no fire in the area. And when we hit that area, we saw nothing but orange signs that says fines and jail time yeah. possible. Of, of up to $5,000 and six months in prison. So we're still in Montana. The further we drive north, it is like the thickest smoke I have ever seen in my life. I'm like. Okay, how is this part open and there's all this smoke? We're in the Flathead National Forest. Part of the Flathead is closed. We pull into the forest. I found spots on the map. The sky's really blue behind. I don't know if you can see over there. The higher you get in the mountains, uh, the smoke is not as thick. We pulled into, we saw the creek, pulled into the first spot and we just took it. We don't ever take the first spot, but we were just so over it. We drove three hours and the goal was not even to drive that much. We were trying to like hang out, rest. This spot is not closed. There's been people driving by. So we know that it is open. We, there's no signs. The whole thing with me telling you that story is today we're just hanging out. We're gonna like relax, not drive anywhere. We have something we wanna do tomorrow because the goal was to get to this lake um, about 45 more minutes up the road. There's a hike we wanna do up there. We're probably gonna do that tomorrow and we wanna see the lake. So this morning for breakfast, I'm gonna make my English muffins with egg, bacon, and jam. And I'm excited about it because we haven't had it in a long time. Let me get that going. How pretty and relaxing is that creek? And not only is it pretty and relaxing, it has a really awesome name. Blue, Blue Sky. Sky Creek, mm -hmm. is that what it is? Blue Sky Creek, how cool is that? And our elevation is really not as tall as you expect being in Montana and basically almost to Canada. The elevation is like 3,900 something, almost 4,000 feet. So that's really not that tall compared to where we were in Colorado 
and in Wyoming. So you would think that Montana would be super, super high in elevation, and it's really not. I think their highest peak you said was what, 7,000? Oh, no, no. They've got, I think it's closer to 10, maybe 1,000. Right. right in there, maybe 11. I don't know. I'd have to research it, but I know it's not a 14 or anywhere mm. around here, which is making the days in the valleys really warm. Mm -hmm. So where we were yesterday, super hot. Super hot. It was dry and hot. We didn't complain. But when we got here, well, this creek is like an AC and it's yeah. made it really cool in temperature, but in the direct sun right now, it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. So like where we were before, not in Glacier, but y'all didn't see the other place we camped at, but like you said, super hot and dry. And at night though, it still got pretty cool in the 50s, but it took a while for it to get that cold. Last night here, it was so cold. I was in my uh, thermals in my 30 degree sleeping bag with two blankets on top of me. So that's pretty cold last night. It's pretty nice. But we wanted to show you all something which we haven't talked about before. We wanted to show you all just how powerful this jackery we have is. This jackery here is a beast. We've used it for, well, we have a Ninja Blender. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while Kelly uses the Ninja Blender to make smoothies if we have ice because we like a good, cool, crisp smoothie on a hot summer day. But today we're running low on coffee. So honey, show them how powerful this thing is. So our favorite coffee is espresso, anything espresso. This is their Italian Stallion from Guillermo's in Little Rock. And this is my coffee grinder that I've had for a couple years now. I just took it with us because I like fresh grown coffee. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind some coffee up because we have this much left. So I didn't know if y'all could see it, but it was pulling about 160 watts. This thing can pull up to a thousand watts before it shuts down. And I, I don't even know what the blender pulls. The blender pulls about 240. About 240? But you know, it only runs for not even a minute. Isn't that impressive? So I did, before we um, started this excursion, I did buy a portable um, rechargeable blender but it was so small there's just no way i don't think it even made enough for one of our shakes that we do so i ended up giving that to jonathan and i just said you know what we're just going to take the ninja i mean you know it's an expensive blender and i really didn't want to store it because i knew i'd use it so we have one other task for the day and this other task is actually maintenance on the trailer we did not know and it's kind of shocking to me honestly but this plywood here real thin plywood that has a basically a decorative sticker over it has this screwed directly into it whenever you slide the kitchen in and out the Dometic refrigerator's power cable gets hung on the Dometic refrigerator and can sometimes tug on this well we had a storm and we were trying to shut this as fast as possible and this just ripped right out of the wall and you can see how thin it is So we were at Home Depot the other day and I picked up some stuff, going to try to make it a little bit more secure. We'll see if it works. To accomplish the task, I have these little stainless steel screws. They're 32 by one and a half inch and one eighth by one inch washers to put on the back side, followed by just a little zinc nut with a rubber, I call it a backy offy knot happening thing. Mm -hmm but it's just a wax ring that keeps the nut from backing off. That is my plan. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want to see if I can uh, see if I can make it work. So that worked out a lot better than I expected. I mean, that washer is gonna hold that thing tight on the back side of the plywood so when we tug it, it's not gonna just have little threads from a screw trying to rip out of plywood. It's actually got a large surface now tugging on the back side, distributing that tug force from when things accidentally get hung up. I like that. 
I like that. Unless we tug it so hard, it just rips the whole wall apart and then we have to get a new plywood. But for now, I think it's gonna work. I like it, I like it. Tonight, I am making my Mexican casserole. And the first thing I need to do is toast some, fry some tortillas. So I'm gonna be baking this in the oven, but the tortillas, of course, are the layering base. So I'm going to do that first. This meal was meant to be eaten with Jonathan. Jonathan, we're so well, sorry. The only problem with this meal is that I can only bake it in this pan and me and Cody eat this whole pan. So I could probably do two because Jonathan would probably eat this whole pan. But it's hard to do two because I'd have to bake it twice and it would take forever. So Jonathan, we gave him a list of things that he needs to get when we come to Arkansas in October. One, the Coleman oven. Two, a nine by nine pan with no handles. And three, a Dutch oven, cause Kelly's gonna cook him a pizza. And we're gonna try to redo the chicken, the meteor yes, chicken. Yes, we'll do one chicken in his Dutch oven and one chicken in our Dutch oven. And we will not cook any appetizers. No <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Oh, hey, by the way, we have someone out there made some meteor chicken stickers for us. Mm -hmm. They're coming in. It says Dome Life Meteor Chicken. Robert, you did a great job, brother. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, so when I make this in my pan, if you have the same size, I do two and two. So I'm probably going to do 12 tortillas. So what are you doing here, darling? I'm just, I gotta fry the tortillas first. Okay, so you put a little oil in there. What do we got here? Some grapeseed oil? Yeah, of course, you know, you use grapeseed oil. We got a little friend here and he's like, oh, parchment paper. The, the bugs around here, not bugs. Yeah, bugs. Well, they're bugs, but they're not like annoying. I mean, they are kind of annoying, but they're butterflies, those bee, bumblebees here in a little bit. The moths are gonna have a party here. Last night, there was a moth party. They were just having a ball. They were on everything, eating the minerals, I guess, from the dirt and dust that's on the trailer and on the tent. There were thousands of them. Then those die out, and then we get butterflies all day, yeah. which was cool. It felt like a fairy tale. It was cool, but then I would just, I'm like, just trying to read, and it's like fluttering by my ear, and it freaks me out. Cause she's afraid of all bugs. I'm not afraid of them. I just don't want to hear fluttering by my ear. It freaks me out. Would you rather a flutter or a buzz? None. None. Okay, touche. I'll give you that. But a flutter if I had to choose. Flutter if you had to choose. See? I'm almost done with my tortillas, so I'm going back and forth really quickly. But here I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. And I'm going to chop that up next step is to cook the beans so i'm using black beans and i'm going to let the oil heat up and i'm going to place the garlic in there first toss it around for about 30 seconds and then i'm going to add in beans and vegetable broth i'm going to measure out about a half a cup drain some beans so we're going to throw that in there with the garlic Got our beans in there. Now I'm going to add, I've got some broth, salt, pepper. Boy, that smells good and this ain't even ready yet. That's what I'm talking about. And cumin. All right, stir that around. I'm gonna let that cook for a minute and I'm gonna be a mirror chopping up some cilantro. All right, this is gonna go in the beans. I'm gonna shred some cheddar. So I'm not sure how much cheddar I'm gonna shred. It's just gonna be a layer. So I'm gonna do quite a bit right now. And then if I need to do more in a minute, I will. Okay, now that I'm, I'm fixing to layer and I'm going to use the parchment paper so that I don't have to clean this pan. So that's really nice. 
All right, so we're gonna do four tortillas. Oh, that's what you meant by four tortillas, okay. Yeah, four tortillas on the bottom. So I'm gonna layer salsa. Salsa, beans, and cheese. And this is basically it. So then we're just gonna keep layering and we're gonna do the same thing. All right, we're ready to bake. So 350 for how long? So we're just gonna bake it. Uh, I'm gonna check it in 10 minutes, see how it's done. 20 minutes later, I think we're done. Oh yeah, that looks good. Let's see if I can get it out. Oh! No. Yeah, coming up, I'm coming up, coming up. Wow, that weighs that's a heavy. lot. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Do one more. Goodness. Oh! Would you stop? <laughs> Look what oh, you did! Whoa. You're okay. wasting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where do you want to sit at? Where do you want to sit at? We'll sit wherever the angel princess would like to sit. Because it's her day. No, it's my day. Every day's your day, babe. When we were talking about moths having a party, we we're going to bed right now. And Kelly just opened this door, and I left the other side of the door open. That might be one. Yeah. I guarantee you they were still in there. Oh, yeah. Like, it's crazy. There's tons of them. It's like, and it's not because of the light at all. Like, just look. Look out at the truck. Look at this. You done in the trailer? Yeah, I'm done in the trailer. I was just showing them. I mean, they are eating this stuff up. They are having a party tonight. They're just licking up salt and any other minerals that they can. Okay, I'm coming. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> That's insane. I guess we're about to go to bed. We'll see you in the morning.
Good morning, everyone. So this morning we did stu quick stuff. You saw me make uh, the Lift Tea, which is Herbalife, and I'm not trying to sell Herbalife. I do not sell Herbalife. That's just our favorite tea. Whenever we're gonna do something that we need energy, that is so much better and so much healthier than coffee. It really just wakes you up and gets you ready to go. So today we're gonna go 45 minutes up the road to a trail. Uh, I know it's about 9.4 miles, I think, and a lake, which I don't know the two names of, but we'll find out as soon as we get there. Okay, we are at the trailhead and I'm reading to you on the hiking project what this says because this is a not very popular trail. It's called Bluebird and Wolverine Lake Loop. It is 9.4 miles and we're not gonna get but 20 feet of elevation but it starts at 1,842 feet. We're only getting 20 feet of elevation. That's it? Yeah, it's not very much elevation. Um, so we're gonna start at this trail 83 right here and um, it's gonna turn into a single track. We're gonna pass three lakes, um, Paradise Lake, Bluebird Lake, and Wolverine Lake, and apparently there's a really cool cabin up there. Well, babe, hold on now. It was 1,842 feet of elevation. I was like, man, I, I could've swore we were going over a pass. Man, I thought this was gonna be an easy hike, y'all. <laughs> I really like the fact that we're starting to do these hikes at least once a week and it's like 10 miles. So we're getting ready for when we get backpacks. I feel like <laughs> that that's really good. Makes us stronger and it's a good workout. A really good workout. We're getting some elevation. So we've started at 5,540 feet of elevation and we are currently at 6,401. And keep in mind where we were camping at was only 3,900. So we drove up, when we drove up, we gained elevation. Oh, here's something cool we didn't tell y'all. We, uh, we're kind of, you know, a couple miles from the Canadian border now, but on this drive, you actually have to loop around the mountain and you get in within 200 feet, no, 200 yards of the Canadian border. But you can't see anything because there's a massive pine and um, spruce tree, so you can't see anything. Plus, it was a huge drop. I could see that. It's just cool. That but it is pretty cool. the furthest north we've ever been. Yeah. Ever! So when we first started this vlog, we told you we were in the Flathead National Forest, but I don't think we are. When we came up here, there's a sign that says we were in the Kootenai National Forest, so. And they border each other really close right here, so you can easily get confused if you don't know the area very well. Yeah, so, surprise, where are the Kootenai?
Man, this is really pretty. Yeah. Okay, so this is Paradise Lake. This is Paradise Lake. Ah, it looks yeah. like Paradise. I mean, look how clear that water is. I think one of the things that we like about doing these unpopular trails is that it gives us more time to, like, think and breathe the air. I don't know. It's just really peaceful. I know it's, it's more risk-taking because of the wildlife, but it is so much more peaceful. This is Bluebird Lake, and it is so pretty. Is Wolverine Lake and we're going to fill our fill our water bottles up while we're here so to filter water Cody is using our survivor filter is the same brand of water filter that we have on the trailer so it just really it takes out everything that's in the water everything so it's just super pure and here it's got a little floater that goes out there and here you go bud Thank you. Continuing on the trail. It has been one of the most remote wilderness filling experiences I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's pretty. Besides swamps down in the south, this has been the most quiet, no airplanes. We haven't heard a single airplane. Nope. Okay, this is Wolverine Lake, and it is stunning. Wow. Stunning. Yeah, we don't know what that other lake was. Yeah, water tastes good. This is the last feature. This is the old cabin. It used to be a border patrol station. Now it is kept up by volunteers. You can camp in it if you backpack in or snowmobile. So it looks really cool. I can't wait to go check it out. And it's first come first serve. Yeah, so there's, there's someone in there right now it looks like.
you'd be surprised these berries really do kind of help you out while you're on the trail so we've been out here just picking berries but just make sure when you come to montana don't just start picking berries thinking that they're huckleberries or thimbleberries there's a lot of different berries out here and we've seen several different types and some of them we don't even know what they are so we don't eat them so take a look online do your research make sure that you're actually eating a huckleberry or a thimbleberry yeah we can tell the difference in the leaves and the vines um that's how we know like this what here. it is it looks more like a more like a bush the plant looks, looks more like this for a huckleberry it has a jagged edge on its leaf and the way it grows almost looks like a blueberry and that my friends is a huckleberry these plants can actually get pretty tall if you look behind kelly it's up to what your neck in yeah. height so they can get kind of tall we don't have a clue what this plant is it has this shape leaf it looks more like a like a short vine and its little berries are growing like this since we don't know what this is we haven't done any research we will not eat this it could be good for you it could not but then right over here is a huckleberry you can tell the difference we found thimble berries so once again we don't know what that berry is so we will not eat that but here is a beautiful thimbleberry. Almost looks like a raspberry. That was a uh, very interesting, but a beautiful creek. We made it. Here it is. Woo. We are worn out, and we are gonna head back to camp. We are back at camp, and all our stuff is still here. Hooray! And Kelly is tired. Super exhausted, but we're still gonna enjoy the evening and have really nice pasta dish. Enjoy a bottle of wine. All right, so what are you making, darling? Um, so it's a vegetable pasta. We've got a ton of vegetables and some feta cheese. So first thing you have to do is chop up all the veggies. Catch y'all on the other.